What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. And sometimes this is called the uh, absolute value function. And you may have ran into absolute values before, maybe not. They're basically characterized by those two vertical lines. But what absolute values do in, uh, as a simple kind of explanation is that they make sure that everything is positive. So any negative value inside an absolute value, it will turn it to a positive. Any positive value, it will just keep it as that positive value. And then if there's a zero there, it's just gonna equal zero. So for example, if we have the absolute value of three, that's just gonna equal three. But if we have the absolute value of negative three, takes any negative number, turns it to a positive, All right? Or the absolute value of zero is equal to zero. So any positive number keeps it the same. Any negative number turns it to a positive. Absolute value of zero is just zero. And so if we make a table of values, to kind of see how this absolute value function is gonna look. Let's go from negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Notice the absolute value negative three, we just said that's equal to positive three. Absolute value negative two is positive two, one, zero, and then these are just gonna stay the same. They're just gonna stay as is. So if we take these points and graph them, We'll have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. So negative three and positive three, that's up here. Negative two, positive two, negative one, positive one, zero and zero, one and one, two and two, three and three. So if we connect these, notice it's just gonna have like a V shape like that, right? Kind of similar to a quadratic, except the quadratic has a curved shape. These are just straight lines over here, right? Another way to think about it is if we took y equals x and extended it, any of that, of those negative y values are just getting reflected up. So this negative portion, if we reflect it over the x-axis to make all the y values positive, we would end up getting that right there. Okay, so that there is how the absolute value function looks like. So what's the domain and range for it? Well, it's actually the exact same as the domain and range for the quadratic function, for the parent function f of x equals x squared. Notice the x values can be anything. They can go from negative infinity to positive infinity with no breaks. So we can say it's x er or we can say x is an element from negative infinity to positive infinity. But what about the range? Notice the y values can never be negative because we're taking any negative values, turning them into a positive. But the y values can be zero, so they could be zero or positive. They can never be negative, so we can say y is an element of real numbers. It could be anything as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. Or in this notation, we'd say y is an element from zero, square bracket, it's inclusive of the zero, to positive infinity, right? So the exact same domain and range as the, um, as the function f of x equals x squared, but it is a different function and it also looks different. 